Well, the Bears got embarrassed, no pun intended, but is anyone surprised? Sports Talk Chicago, Herbert Johnson Glow. In this video, we're going to break down the Bears' Jets game, talk about why the Bears lost, what it means for them moving forward. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, set up notifications so you don't miss a thing. Talk Chicago Bears daily. We have live streams of every single Bears game, plus interviews with former Bears players and special guests who cover the Bears and other Chicago sports teams. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports, Facebook, John Zaglul. Want to watch more of this show? Head on over to SportsTalkChicago.com. I want to start today with this. You're not surprised, are you? What did you expect? Come on. Justin Fields didn't play. The Bears are talentless as a roster. How did you think this was going to go? <laughs> I laughed because it was so pathetic. <laughs> and yet, we all expected mediocrity. We all expected this to be a waste of a game. Trevor Simeon didn't do bad. This is not a knock on him. Not even a knock on the Bears in general. But this team right now is a dumpster fire. they are probably three or four salvageable players on this roster. Literally three or four. I don't see any more. Maybe Sanborn, maybe Montgomery, if the Bears decide to bring him back. He did okay. There were very little, even bright spots in this game for the Bears. They were winning 10-7 to in their defense, but that proved to be short-lived. And you know you have a problem defensively when Mike White, who is capable but still a backup, has the game of his life. You know, Jack Wilson. Face this Bears defense, I'm sure he would turn it around even. Any quarterback would turn it around against this Bears defense. Every quarterback, it seems, is turning it around against this Bears defense. <laughs> Just so bad. And again, I know the Bears traded away Roquan Smith, Robert Quinn. I'm okay with that. I was fine with those trades. And we're seeing other players develop and play, like Sanborn, who's been Revelation for this Bears team, and I think should be starting at linebacker next year for them. But I think the scary or the discouraging part so far is there are veteran players on this Bears defense who simply cannot play. Eddie Jackson missed a couple of tackles yesterday. Jalen Johnson got beat again. Kendall Bildor needs to be cut. There are so many issues in the secondary. The Bears had no pass rush against Mike White. Well, it's okay to see them fail because then you know who you're going to keep and who you're not going to keep. There are veterans who are slacking still. And it's concerning. Offensively, Trevor Simeon did exactly what he was expected and supposed to do. He did keep the Bears in the game for the most part early. But the Bears offense hit a slide. Eben Montgomery did well in the limited time that he got. Evans, who was running more often than Ebner, did okay as well. Not much doing offensively either, but I did want to say this. And this was a talking point early in the game when Trevor Simeon was doing well. And we saw it in the stream, saw this on Twitter. I want to address this. There is no quarterback controversy. And you know me. I mean, I'm a straight shooter, and I have railed against Justin Fields, deservedly so, for his poor play early on. But there is no quarterback controversy. There were people making arguments. Hey, if the Bears passed more, Trevor Simeon's a pocket passer. He's looking great. And this is not a knock on Simeon. It's a knock on this argument. Simeon is one of the best backups in football, but key word, backup. There is no quarterback controversy. There is no we should start Trevor Simeon. There is no Justin Fields needs to change his game. Of course he needs to develop as a passer. I think everybody could agree on that, but He's not a bad quarterback. And for those of you who long for some pocket passer like Trevor Simeon, how'd that work out with this Bears offensive line? And these Bears weapons, these lackluster Bears weapons, not too good. You know, I found more of an appreciation for Justin Fields yesterday than I think I ever have. That pathetic performance showed me just how good Justin Fields really is for this team. Seriously. Look at what happens when he's there versus when he's not there. Trevor Simeon may have passed for more yards, but he was pressured. He was sacked so many times. He was dropped and hit. The Bears' offense could not function. They scored 10 points. 
But Fields is there. He's able to scramble, able to avoid pressure, able to make this offensive line look better. I saw somebody comment saying PFF had the Bears' old line at 14th in the NFL. Well, remember this. Fields is not getting sacked as much as he should be because he's running away from defenders. And Fields still has tons of sacks on him and tons of dropdowns. I have more of an appreciation for Justin Fields today than I did yesterday before the game. I do. He actually makes his O-line look better than what they are. It makes this team look better. Look at how much he elevates this team's offensive output. Look at what he does to make a difference for the Bears. Look at how different they are offensively. How many points they score more when he plays. I would argue right now he's the MVP of this team. He is the most valuable player. Without him playing, this team is unwatchable. This reminds me of, like, 2014 Bears football with a combination of Matt Barkley starting and him going 3-13 and and John Fox being the head coach. It was horrible. It was atrocious. Oh, by the way, you got blown out by a backup QB in the Jets. This is not a great team you're facing, and you still lost by 21. I appreciate the effort and the drive that Justin Fields has and the difference that he makes on this team. I appreciate it more today than I did last week or even in weeks prior. I'm not saying he's perfect. There are things that he needs to work on. Everybody has something to work on, always. Even the great quarterbacks have something to work on. Aaron Rodgers certainly does. Russell Wilson does. There are great quarterbacks who need to work on stuff. Justin Fields does, too. But there is no quarterback controversy in Chicago. There is no need to test the waters and see what we could get from Trevor Simeon. There's no need even to say that Justin Fields isn't a good enough passer, because I'll tell you what, Fields would have done better yesterday than Trevor Simeon did. And Trevor Simeon did okay. But Fields puts up the same, if not better, numbers every week, plus rushing. Fields overall, offensively, is the lifeblood of this team. He single-handedly runs this offense. Rushing, passing. So I find myself having more gratitude for Justin Fields after this loss, and I think that's one of the main keys, the main takeaways from this game. Sure, there were positive performances. I think Sanborn is going to be a starting linebacker for this team next year. He's earned it. He deserves it. I think it was a great job by the Bears to get rid of Roquan Smith. You bring in an undrafted guy who is not going to be making $20 million per year, and you hit gold. That's a huge move for Ryan Poles. David Montgomery did well, but is he going to be the answer running back moving forward? Going to have to wait and see. Will the Bears pay him? I don't think so, and they shouldn't. The secondary with veteran players somehow can't defend the Jets, which is scary. But the one constant in all of this and all those Problem that we saw up in the game yesterday, Justin Fields is important. Justin Fields is necessary. Justin Fields needs to be appreciated more. He needs more appreciation than what he gets today from this Bears team. I mean, look at how bad they look. Ryan Poles and Matt Eberblues looked like idiots yesterday with this roster. They did. If this was the Bears team and they didn't have Justin Fields, they'd be fired. Or they'd be closer, there'd be rumors of them getting fired already. If this was the product they plan on putting out there, and they did put this product out there without Justin Fields, Justin Fields is masking the problems of this team and this organization right now. He is your most valuable asset. You do everything you can to take care of him and please him. Obviously, develop him more. He's not perfect. He's not there yet. But he's pretty damn important. He's the reason the Bears are putting up points every week. The reason why they have more rushing yards and a more dynamic offense that's only going to change and get better over the years to come. He's the reason why they're in games, usually. After this game, you have to at least admit the fact that there has to be more of an appreciation for Justin Fields compared to what you had and your thoughts before. Look at how bad they were. Look at how incompetent they were offensively, defensively, as a team as a whole. It's scary. 
This was Ryan Poles' creation. Think about that. Another rebuilding, obviously. This is not the final product, but this was his plan. This is who he had to bring out to roll out for the Bears in 2022. Scary. Veterans not stepping up. Secondary-wise, scary. There are deeply rooted issues with this team that need to be solved. They need a big-time wide receiver. They need offensive line help. They need defensive line help. They need secondary help. They need help everywhere, it seems like. And yet, Justin Fields, every week, masks all those problems. I have more of an appreciation. I have more gratitude. And I understand more so some of the hype surrounding Justin Fields. I get it. I also get why the media loves to worry about Justin and not about the other problems that the Bears have. He masks everything. And look at how bad they were yesterday. We should be talking more about concern. How could the Bears secondary get better? Why do they have all these needs? But instead, we're so worried about and infatuated with Justin Fields. He does a great job PR-wise even for the Bears, for Ryan Poles, for Matt Eberflus. And Ryan Pace was the one who drafted him. Just saying... So I'm walking away from this pathetic, sorry-ass excuse for a game with some gratitude. I'm a little bit mad, but what did we expect? I didn't expect 31 points to be given up, but what are you going to do? I mean, the Bears were going to lose anyway. They got the Packers this week. Jordan Love somehow, some way is good now. And maybe Justin Fields returns, and that'd be a huge matchup. And one that I think the Bears have to be competitive in at least I'd love for them to win, but again, I really feel like they're tanking. I'm not picking the Bears to win for the rest of this year. I'm not going to do it. I think they're trying to tank. I think they want the two or three overall pick. I think they're going to keep tanking. So I won't be picking them for success, but the Bears should play the Packers well this weekend. No excuse why not. But if Justin Fields doesn't play somehow, expect another loss big time even. There are severe deficiencies with this team. Ones we don't talk about that we should be talking about. And all I have to say is this message to Ryan Poles. Get your act together this offseason. Because if you roll out a similar sorry-ass roster... Next year won't be as grand as you think it's going to be. And this is not an indictment or a scolding of Ryan Poles, but I'm just going to say, look at how bad this team was yesterday. Look at how sorry and pathetic some of these players are. I know they're rebuilding, but we better see some changes for next year's roster, is the point. This is not going to win them games in 2023 or in the future with Justin Fields. It's going to be the Justin Fields show, bad team, they suck, Fields is going to want to track see it right now. So my hope is that the Bears put in more money and invest more in helping out Justin Fields moving forward because obviously he's the only reason why they score points. He's the only reason why they're in some of these games. It was a summary, pathetic loss and something that Bears fans and the Bears themselves have to move on from. But my biggest takeaway is the following. Justin Fields should be appreciated more. Because without him, his Bears team is practically unwatchable. Thanks for watching today's show here on YouTube. Really appreciate the time. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports, Facebook, John Zaklul. Want to watch more of this show? Head on over to sportstalkchicago.com. So long, everyone.